Hello and welcome to Obla Air, a Learn English radio series from the British Council. I'm Joan Walker. And I'm David Evans. Obla Air is about the lives of the staff and passengers of a budget airline based in the city of Freeport. And as we follow the story, we also aim to improve your English language skills. So, what's in this programme? Today, we hear the final episode in the second Obla Air story. And there's also an interview with a film producer from Mozambique. But first, let's remind you of what happened in the last programme. Livia Hawke's bag was stolen in a bad part of Freeport, and Mars came to her rescue. Here's the scene. Phew. There we are. This is your bag, isn't it? Oh, Muzz, thank you so much. You're bleeding, Muzz. It's nothing. Oh, Muzzy, are you okay? Let me get you a tissue. Yeah, yeah. Really, it's nothing. I'm fine. Well, get in. I think we should get out of here. Good idea. Let's get back to the office. Thank you so much. In the next scene, the characters are all back at the Obler Air office. The captain starts by apologising to Livia. He says... We're all sorry about what happened today. Obviously, you're going to go back home and write about all the bad experiences you've had here. But Livia tells him there's no need to apologise. She says... I'm sorry. I was stupid. So here's your first question for the next scene. Why does Livia think she was stupid? Then Muzz enters the Obler Air office and Betsy says to him... Where exactly are you going? And your second question is... How does Muzz reply to that? I'll give you those questions again. Why does Livia think she was stupid? And how does Muzz reply when Betsy asks him where he's going? Here's the scene. I'm sorry, Livia. Oh, uh, me too, young lady. We're all sorry about what happened today. But, Captain... No, let me just say something. Obviously, you're going to go back home and write about all the bad experiences you've had here. That's your job. But, you know, Freeport is not such a bad place. It's just... Oh, Captain, I don't want you to be sorry. I'm sorry I was stupid. Every city in the world has bad areas. I know that. There are places in London I don't go after dark. It's the same everywhere. I thought I could find the real Freeport somewhere out there, but I should have known better. You people are the real Freeport, and I want to say thank you for everything you've done for me. All right, everyone. I'm just going. I just came to say goodbye. Oh, Muzz, don't go yet. I wanted to thank you as well. It was nothing. That kind of thing happens all the time. Anyway, I'll be off. Muzz, wait a minute. Where exactly are you going? I don't know. I've got some cousins somewhere in Freeport. Well, I don't know where, but maybe I could find them. Maybe they'll help me get a job or something. Yeah. Anyway, guys, sorry for what I did. I shouldn't have lied. I shouldn't have tried to cheat you. We're good people, yeah? So why does Livia say that she was stupid? She says... Every city in the world has bad areas. I thought I could find the real Freeport somewhere out there. But I should have known better. So Livia admits she made a mistake. She should have known better. She was wrong to go out into the city to find the real Freeport. Why? Because, as she says... You people are the real Freeport. And then Muzz comes into the office and tells everyone that he's leaving. When Betsy asks where he's going, he says... I don't know. I've got some cousins somewhere in Freeport. Maybe I could find them. Maybe they'll help me to get a job. And finally, he apologises for his behaviour. He says... Anyway, guys, sorry for what I did. These days, people often use the word guys to address both men and women. Muzz continues. I shouldn't have lied. I shouldn't have tried to cheat you. And there, Muzz is using a construction we heard earlier to talk about a past mistake. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have lied. Muzz then says... You're good people. 
Well, we know we're close to the end of the story. But is this also the end of the relationship between Moz and Obla Air? We'll find out in a moment. You're listening to Obla Air, a Learn English radio series brought to you by the British Council. So now it's time for the final scene of our story. And as you listen, answer these questions. What surprising offer does the captain make to Muzz? Where is Muzz going to live? And what does Betsy think of all this? I'll give you those questions again. What surprising offer does the captain make to Muzz? Where is Muzz going to live? And what does Betsy think of all this? Here's the scene. Muzz, are you serious about looking for a job? Yeah, I'm serious. But times are hard. I haven't got much chance, I know that. It's just that after the burglary, I started to think we needed better security here at the office. You know, someone to watch the place at night. Like a kind of security guard? Yes, like a security guard. Would you be interested? That's cool. Yeah. I could do that. There's an empty room at the back. We could put a bed in it for you and you'd have a place to stay if you wanted. Hey, thank you, Captain. I said you were good people. Is that okay with you, Betsy? Oh, that's okay with me. I always said there was nothing wrong with Muzz, didn't I, Pavi? <gasps> you always did, Betsy. He, he just, just had, had a bad, bad attitude. attitude. <laughs> 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 Well, what surprising offer does the captain make to Muzz? The captain starts by saying... After the burglary, I started to think we needed better security here at the office. Burglary, remember, means the same as break-in. The captain says that to improve the security of the office, he wants... Someone to watch the place at night. Muzz asks... Like a security guard? The captain then asks Muzz if he'd like to do that job. Muzz replies... That's cool. Yeah, I could do that. In everyday conversation, the word cool is often used to mean good. So Muzz accepts the captain's offer to become a security guard for Obla Air. And what about the next question? Where is Muzz going to live? The captain says that there's an empty room at the back of the office, and so... We could put a bed in it for you, and you'd have a place to stay, if you wanted. Mars, of course, is again delighted. But what does Betsy think of all this? She says... That's OK with me. I always said there was nothing wrong with Muzz. Nothing wrong with Muzz, apart from maybe one thing. He just had... A bad attitude. And that brings us to the end of that Obla Air story. This is Obla Air, a Learn English radio series brought to you by the British Council. Now here's a chance to hear the whole of today's drama again. Miss Hawk, are you OK? I'm fine, I'm, I'm fine. Olivia, I'm so pleased we found you. Uh, have you uh, seen Muzz? He ran off down that way. Get into the cab and we'll go and look for him. Oh, no need. Here he comes now. <sighs> there you are. This is your bag, isn't it? Oh, Muzz, thank you so much. You're bleeding, Muzz. It's nothing. Oh, Muzz, are you, are you OK? Let me get you a tissue. Yeah, yeah, really... It's nothing. I'm fine. Well, get in. I think we should get out of here. Good idea. Let's get back to the office. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, Livia. Oh, uh, me too, young lady. We're all sorry about what happened today. But, Captain... No, let me just say something. Obviously, you're going to go back home and write about all the bad experiences you've had here. That's your job. But, you know, Freeport is not such a bad place. It's just... Oh, Captain, I don't want you to be sorry. I'm sorry I was stupid. Every city in the world has bad areas. I know that. 
There are places in London I don't go after dark. It's the same everywhere. I thought I could find the real Freeport somewhere out there, but I should have known better. You people are the real Freeport, and I want to say thank you for everything you've done for me. All right, everyone. I'm just going. I just came to say goodbye. Oh, Mars, don't go yet. I wanted to thank you as well. It was nothing. That kind of thing happens all the time. Anyway, I'll be off. Mars, wait a minute. Where exactly are you going? I don't know. I've got some cousins somewhere in Freeport. Well, I don't know where, but maybe I could find them. Maybe they'll help me get a job or something. Yeah. Anyway, guys, sorry for what I did. I shouldn't have lied. I shouldn't have tried to cheat you. We're good people, yeah? Muzz, are you serious about looking for a job? Yeah, I'm serious. But times are hard. I haven't got much chance, I know that. It's just that after the burglary, I started to think we needed better security here at the office. You know, someone to watch the place at night. Like a kind of security guard? Yes, like a security guard. Would you be interested? That's cool. Yeah, I could do that. There's an empty room at the back. We could put a bed in it for you and you'd have a place to stay if you wanted. Hey, thank you, Captain. I said you were good people. Is that okay with you, Betsy? Oh, that's okay with me. I always said there was nothing wrong with Muzz, didn't I, Pavi? <gasps> you always did, Betsy. He, he just, just had, had a bad, bad attitude. <laughs> in Obla Air, we've been hearing how people from all over the world meet in Freeport and find ways of living and working together, even people with a bad attitude like Muzz Anthony. So today, we're going to finish by listening to part of an interview with a film producer from Mozambique called Pedro Pimenta. He begins by saying, I believe we're living in a world where there is a tendency of trying to make all things look exactly the same. So he believes that people are trying to make people and things in the world more and more similar to each other. Does he think that's a good thing? Let's find out. Here's Pedro Pimenta. I believe we're living in a world where there is the tendency of trying to make all things look exactly the same. And I believe that the world is much more than one size fits all. And I believe that the richness, the wealth of the world is based on the diversity of cultures and approaches. So does Pedro think it's a good thing that people are trying to make the world more and more similar? No, he says. The world is much more than one size fits all. I believe the richness, the wealth of the world is based on the diversity of cultures, of approaches. He says he believes that the wealth, the richness of the world, is based on the diversity, the difference between cultures and approaches. Let's hear him say that again. I believe we're living in a world where there is the tendency of trying to make all things look exactly the same. And I believe that the world is much more than one size fits all. And I believe that the richness, the wealth of the world is based on the diversity of cultures and approaches. And that thought brings us to the end of this series. You've been listening to Obla Air, a Learn English radio series brought to you by the British Council. From David Evans and me, Joan Walker, goodbye. Goodbye.